Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, N-A-P-P-I-E. And welcome to the YouTube channel. On today's episode, I know you love it. If it's your first time seeing me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to get a notification anytime I post a video. As you can see, this is the fourth episode on the women empowerment. And we are inspiring women on the land. You know, there are so many things that they talk about women. But mm, today, we are here to change things you can see a beautiful lady right here and she's going to talk about business and um what she's doing on the motherland she's ghanaian you're ghanaian right of course i am at the same <laughs> 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 hey, <laughs> me <hoi your pa. laughs> correct correct yes this is real tree yes so um she's going to tell us what she's doing here because she's been away she was she, were you born here no so i was born in dc born in washington DC. washington dc so, uh, uh, US. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going to tell us why she came to Ghana, her business here, and she's Ghanaian though, so we can not suck her. And um, we are embracing, <laughs> <laughs> we are embracing her with open arms. So, yes, you are ready. Just come with us. Let's go. First of all, can you tell us your name and um, where you're coming from? You said DC, and um, but your original country, as in where you come from in Ghana. Ghana. Right. Okay. All right. So, okay. So my name is Laurencia. Mm -hmm. um, some people know me by Laura. Um, on Instagram, my name is Alcacia New Year. So there's a bit of a, a, a something behind that. My mm -hmm. great um, grandpa, um, who's passed on since then, um, named me Alcacia New Year because I was born on Sunday and my birthday is January 1st, which is New oh, Year. So yes. So that's a special those are my word. names. Yes. <laughs> that's a special word. Yes. You're right. Very dear. Of course, you're new year. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, which part of Ghana are you from? So, my both of my parents are from Kuo. My, mm -hmm. my, my maternal grandmother is Kuo and Adan. So, some Adan and some Kuo. Some uh, chilling girls, yes. man. Yes. You know, cool uh, girls? Oh, my God. You already know about <laughs> business. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, yeah. Back to business. Um, when did you come to Ghana? Okay. So, I know you were asking earlier. I was born and raised in D.C., mm -hmm. um, Northwest D.C., which is in the U.S., um, and I came to Ghana, you know, early on, like I went to Achimata for a little bit. That was like primary, you know, I really don't recall that experience, but then I came back again for JSS like a couple years and then I went back again. So in my adulthood, um, my first time coming and staying in my adulthood was a year ago. All right. Um, yeah. When I came during the Christmas season mm -hmm. and, um, I decided to stay. So, okay. Uh, almost a year later, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so what brought you to Ghana? You said you came for school. Now, let's say when your eye opened, when right. you became right. so a big my, girl. Yes, so <laughs> in my adult years, mm -hmm. um, I came just for the festive season, like mm -hmm. everyone does. Um, enjoyment. I, of course. <laughs> like, I mean, I think Ghana is A1 for enjoyment. Uh -huh. like, so I came um, during um, last year's Christmas. All right. And then, of course, we were all affected by COVID during that time. Mm -hmm. And so we were all um, teleworking. And so some of us had the opportunity to, you know, work from home. And so um, I worked for here, from here okay. um, for about a year. Um, all right. And so that's kind of, you know, what brought me here. It was vacation. And then I decided to stay because why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back again. Um, there is this misconception that um, if you are born in the U.S. by, like, let's say, Ghanaian parents, you are not from America. Okay, <laughs> so you know what I always say? I always say that, mm -hmm. you know, in, in America, we have different classifications, obviously, of race, of people. All right. And, you know, even within our, in the black community, you know, we have some people who rather identify as African American and right. some people who identify as Black American All right. you know, Amer and some people who want to identify just as American, not mm -hmm. white American or whatever um, and so for me I am actually the true definition of an African American All because right. you know when I always say when I touch you know behind me I can feel you know my mother she's here, my father he's from Ghana mm -hmm. so I think it's you know it's a, it's a decent so my, in African American my, you know in my previous video with Jewel yeah. people were saying she's Liberian, she's okay. not uh, African American, but okay. she's Liberian American. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know? That sounds like such an awesome right. Song. Yes. And um, people were telling me to change the title from um, yeah, African American to she. As you use she, yes. the phrase she. I was like, she said she, she is African American. Actual uh, right. African you know, American nationality. American. She's American. That's so interesting to highlight because I think sometimes. Um, we just don't understand. That's right. all that it is. So just to, for clarification, you know, 
a true definition of an African American typically is someone like myself who, you know, both um, parents are, you know, on the African continent, um, but I was born in America. So I think that would make sense. All right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> maybe some people thinking, since you know your roots, Right. You should be a African. You should be an African. You shouldn't be African American. Okay, so I okay, so I, I can understand it from that angle. However, I think individually it is oh. up to you to identify with what you identify. There's some people who, you know, who may not be first generation migrants, but who feel a sense of Africa within them. And right. I think there you you don't have a right to rob them of that perspective of okay. themselves. And so, um, for me, I am both American because mm -hmm. I was born in America. Um, and I am both African because my parents and myself, I have African blood that runs through me. I'm African of the Thank African you so gene. Much. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. She eats banku. I sure do. <laughs> I cook it, I eat it, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fast forward. Um, first time coming to Ghana, mm -hmm. what was the perception like when you were coming? Okay. Was it for purposely business, as you said in the beginning, or you were coming to say, oh, let me stay? and start something right that means so just to be clear i actually came for vacation i didn't come for business but i just so happened that i was working already i was working in the u.s okay so i didn't stop working i just kept working but I, I decided to transition here um having that background of ghanaian parents i always wanted to be in ghana work in ghana live in ghana have an opportunity so i think the pandemic really gave us all an opportunity to really take risk those who are going to take risk and those who are a little bit more risk averse you know observe right. and so for me i was part of the risk takers <laughs> and um mm -hmm. so in coming here though i wanted to be a student of the country because from my cultural lens being a, an african-american mm -hmm. things are not the same for me as if i actually lived in ghana you know my entire life you know and i was right. born here and i was raised here etc so for me I feel like, and I, I felt like at that time, and I still feel like there's still so much of Ghana for me to learn and explore. So mm -hmm. I wanted to understand the business environment here. And what better way to do that than to come and actually immerse yourself in the business environment. So I took it as an opportunity while I'm here to engage, you know, some people and some individuals, some organizations, um, and understanding how they work. You know, because I right. hear it, you get guidance on it, but, you know, it's different when you're actually um, experiencing it on the ground. Exactly. Talking about how they work. Yeah. Um, bringing your business here to Ghana um, are you trying to force your business okay let me let you use force but are you bringing your business to support the normal Ghanaian or you are trying to get something from the Ghanaian and support them with your business too interesting that's an interesting, interesting mm. question so I think in being here what happened naturally is that I identified things that I guess we would classify as problems, it's issues, it's right. bottlenecks, etc. in the business community. And in identifying those things, being a solutions oriented individual, mm -hmm. I automatically, my mind is thinking of all the ways in which we can, you know, affect the evolution of those systems and those processes. So I, although I'm a change agent, you know, in, in my um, individual profession as a consultant, um, or I act as a change agent, that was not my interest in this country. You know, I love Ghana for what Ghana is, and I think there are ways to enhance our systems, enhance our processes, um, and that's kind of like the angle that I was thinking about as it relates to, to being here. Um, and so I've come to learn a lot, and I've come to see opportunities where we can affect change, All opportunities right. where we can provide solutions mm -hmm. for problems. Right. So, yeah. As a consultant, how long have you been doing this business? It's about 10 years now. 10 yeah. years good that yeah. means you started in the states yes you bring it back home yes. and then enhance on it here Absolutely. very good Absolutely. the question i want to ask is um working as a consultant together with technology right. is it working here for you you know we have bottlenecks in our systems here mm -hmm. um and i think that one area that i i can actually um I can actually speak positively to is is the technology aspect and I think right. it's more so I think it's given us an opportunity to really um, beyond just marketing it's given us an opportunity to really um, highlight what's really happening on grounds and helping us to really understand how to uh, forge partnerships you know so yeah. you know you have initiatives where people I know you know NGOs that are very successful at you know forging partnerships 
here in Ghana mm -hmm. for their initiatives that they have here in Ghana when, when they come. Um, um, one of them is the Distance Relatives Project. And I know that that is because of technology and they're able to do that because, right. you know, we're able to communicate with each other through social media, et cetera, mm -hmm. and really highlight some of what we're wanting to do and the things that we're currently doing. And as a result of that, they've been able to be very effective um, here when they come and they have their initiatives. So that's just one that's example beautiful. of um, how technology helps support what we're, you know, that's we're really, to really do. awesome. Um, uh, yes. Now back to your business in Ghana as a woman. You know, talking about women entrepreneurship, it has been really a, a big thing here in Ghana that people don't really support women okay. when it comes to women and entrepreneurship. Okay. All right. So you bringing your business here. Are you basically going to be looking at women as in the way you started, you know how you went through and what you went through right. as a woman right. and coming here, even you saw it yourself. Right. So coming from this background as a Ghanaian, what are you going to do about it? Help women or you're going to just mix all type of um, 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 right. people? Right. I understand what you're saying. No, mm. that's a great question. So, you know, I, w I want to acknowledge the fact that the Ghanaian woman is, I would say, of the most entrepreneurial spirit of, the, of any other human that I have come to know. Thank okay? you. And that is transcends from the tomato seller to the Suddenly. I mean they find ways to um, kind of maneuver and push through hardship and a lot of times that response is entrepreneurship mm -hmm. um, as minuscule as it may seem to whoever the case may be so that ranges all the way up through to um, you know uh, different industries right and I do see um, women as a force here in this country. And I think it's important. I think off, off air we were talking about how, you know, women um, are not, you know, highlighted. Oh, right. You know, they're usually in the back, background. Mm -hmm. So I think that women are doing so much more in the background that we actually know, right, that's highlighted, that shows like this is very important. And in doing that and understand that, my company seeks to work with people who are of the highest standard in the quality of work that they produce. Right. And with that context, we know that women can produce very high quality standard work. So I think if we're going beyond the gender aspect and we're just looking at us as human beings and our capacity to perform, mm -hmm. I think women have a history of um, of showing how they are able to be diverse in their approach to to, to, to issues and and be very endurance, you know, have a lot right. of endurance, you know, in that process. And so for me, I think that as you're looking for high quality um, and people of high standard, I think women. It's it's like it's like a no brainer. Yeah. Women are women are the focus. So right now, currently um, within my organization, we are predominantly obviously we're women owned, right? Mm -hmm. But we are predominantly um, women. We do have um, a mixture of male. Um, it's about seven of us currently on team. Um, right. Five of us are women, and so that is our approach. And it seems like um, the people that I've been you know connecting with um, at that professional level and that have that skill set that we're looking for tend to also be women. So I don't know what you <laughs> yeah. want to say, you know. <laughs> I, I understand. I, you know, mm -hmm. I definitely always want to say that it's important that um, we we need men. Okay? Right. We're not, you know, we're not bashing men. We need men. Um, but I think we're complementary to each other in terms of our roles. And so, you know, I'm, I'm being careful with how I'm highlighting it. But I do want you to know a lot of the people that I've been in contact with and the people who are actually doing genuine business. Who, who that is their motive. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to be. Um, I don't want to stir the pot here, but I will, right? <laughs> in the sense that usually when in the consulting industry, you know, you do a lot of networking and you're engaging a lot of different individuals. It's a part of the it? process and business development and client acquisition. And as you're doing that, um, you have people who want to set up um, meetings with you. You know, it's very normal. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, um, I find that um, engaging women, they typically... That is their motive. Right. <laughs> their motive is business, mm -hmm. you know. And unfortunately, sometimes you engage men and, um, you know, they just don't understand the concept of business is business. And, you know, um, you know, personal time is personal time. And mm -hmm. so if I engage you for business, that's exactly what I intend for us to do. Exactly. So I think these are some of the <laughs> challenges that um, we as women um, encounter. And these are some of the nuances that we don't really speak to and highlight. Mm -hmm. And it really does and can make for a very complex environment for a woman that's trying to make her mark and really, you know, be a, a, a resource um, because you're immediately contending that bottleneck. That's like your immediate challenge. Um, wow. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll, I'll 
I'll let that go. Maybe, maybe another segment, but yeah. The way she's talking looks like she's a feminist. <laughs> are you one? I hope you are too. <laughs> Wow. No, do, like I said, do, do you believe in feminists? I do. You know, I think. I, no, wait. Are you one? I am a feminist. Okay. I mean, I don't know how I could not be a feminist, mm -hmm. right? But I think feminism is in men and in women. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can, te if we can understand that, you know, I have a masculine energy, right, that comes when it needs to come, right? Okay. And you have a feminine energy. That if you don't, if you haven't really defined it and understood it, you have to sit with it and really let it evolve because it really does give you that yin and that yang, that balance that you need to be, you know, just a balanced individual in life, you know. And so, um, I, I hope that you have some level of feminism Maybe. in you. And I also think the, femi the, mm. the definition of feminism kind of varies, and I, I've heard loose definitions around uh, feminist. For me, I believe in you know, I, f I feel like at the government level, at the policy level that policies should uh, be advantageous to mm -hmm. men and women equally. Okay? All right, all right. Things so Things that govern countries. I'm sorry for cutting no, you, right. but um, talking about feminists and women in um, um, entrepreneur, women as entrepreneurs, right. um, does it come in hand in hand? Because you mentioned mm -hmm. um, feminism in your description right. that it's not all about women. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So does it come in hand in hand? As it relates to? Entrepreneurship and then feminism. I mean, yeah, because as I'm defining feminism as, you know, f feminism being um, an area, a practice, it's, I think it's a part of society. I think it's a part of who we are. And mm -hmm. I think that you cannot as an individual disregard, um, you know, policies and initiatives that are advantageous to women. That right. I look at it from the policy um, angle. I think that for me, I feel like it was derived off of socioeconomic issues and political issues. And so that's the angle that I look at it. So when we look at um, women and we look at entrepreneurship, then we're thinking about some of the policies that help to encourage entrepreneurship within any economy. And so you want to, in, in speaking to feminism, obviously we want the, the, the policies that are created, the laws that are govern, governing us to be reflective of that bridge, you know? And so for me, that is really um, the deal breaker around mm -hmm. feminism. Um, but outside uh. of that, I want men and women to understand that we carry both masculine and feminine energy. And mm -hmm. so, that's it's so true. Yeah, yes, to, I believe touch, that. Touch, touch that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now let's go to women and power. Okay. Right. So women in women as leaders and women in power. What is your take on that? As it relates to um, entrepreneurship. You're right. I mean, I think no doubt we um, have come very far, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think the I think the cultural context is important because again, for me, when I think about Ghana, and I think about women, and I think about entrepreneurs. You're right, you know, in our previous conversation that you know a lot of times it's on the back end. Women are not as highlighted as some of the names that you'll hear, you know, right. around. You know, when we mention like Despite McDan, like mm -hmm. we mention certain names, like you mm -hmm. keep hearing it. However, women in the in the in the, in, in the background are very successful, That's very, right very, very wealthy women in, mm -hmm. in this country. And of that, you know, I think that um, what's important is to understand and to highlight how those women came about, you know, in terms of their success, you know, and wanting to encourage and cre encourage that cycle of girls moving into success, you know, right. in their womanhood. And in order to do that, I think these women that are kind of like in the background that are not as highlighted, I think through shows like what you're doing, you know, um, not necessarily of individuals like me, but, you know, maybe you'll interview other more successful women, you mm -hmm. know, it's important for them to speak to what it is that they have done to, you know, acquire their success and the challenges that they have gone through um, to get there. Um, but yeah, I mean, for here, culturally speaking, in Ghana, I think that there is a huge presence of women in entrepreneurship right. and women in business and women in power, uh, more so than if you would ask me from the cu cultural context of the mm -hmm. U.S., you know. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, there are statistics around that. And, you know, All right. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> a lot. All right. Um, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for greasing the show. Um, that was really, really informative. I really learned something new today. Um, I want you to give one advice to the young women 
who are like you and um, younger than you who are starting a business in fact uh, older than you as well who are starting businesses who are trying to come up as women right. I want you to advise them for me just one advice. Okay, one advice. So I would say endurance. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would say that they should master endurance. Um, and, you know, it is challenging. And some of the things were, let's say, one thing that I did growing up um, was that I'd look at women who I thought were successful when I'd, like, be riding the train um, in between my graduate classes or whatever I was doing, whatever hardships I was going through. And I'd stop them and I'd ask them, I'd say, what, what did you do? I, I, I see you as someone very successful. What is it that you do? What have you done? And most times women would engage me back and they would tell me the things that they've done and it would inspire me. Right. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, you know, not having resources and going through challenging times and still, you know, being in school and all those different mm -hmm. things. And so what I would say is learn and master endurance and because hardships are meant to come. To, to be alive is to encounter hardships. And so I think it's important um, for um, for young women to uh, master, to practice and master um, the, you know, endurance um, and just use that as a resource in life because the challenges um, abound. Um, but life is good, so you know. Make sure you uh, make sure life you enjoy it Ghana. to the fullest. Yeah, make sure you enjoy it to the fullest um, to give you that balance that you're going to need. <laughs> awesome! That's really amazing. And thank you once again for coming. Sure, I really. Medasse, medasse pa, nyamin show, vibre. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Um, on behalf of my subscribers and my followers, they really want to know these about women. All right, and oh, okay. it's, it's going to go to you. There's just five beautiful questions. Okay. So if you're ready, we can go. Okay. All right. Um, what goes through your mind when you think women who are entrepreneurs? I think about um, generations. When I think about women, I don't, I mean, think about generations. I think about um, the impact. I think that um, it's greater impact. Um, and I think about the progress mm -hmm. um, that that we've made, and <laughs> how exciting, <laughs> how exciting that is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I mean, for me, that though these are the positive things I, that right. come to mind. Okay, question two says, what is one thing you know about women and work you wish you had known earlier in your career? You know, I think as 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 little girls, as younger girls, you tend to um, idolize women, you know, that are older than you, right? And you tend to think that as you get older, um, certain things dissipate. You don't have certain issues. You don't have certain insecurities. You don't have certain, you know, um, you know, different um, things that you deal with. And so I think for me, um, it would have been really nice to know my career that um, women at um, at um, that are further on in their career still face the same insecurities that I do, um, you know, as it relates to speaking, as it relates to engaging. Anytime they have to engage a new business prospect, they face those, those same butterflies, you know, and that the planning doesn't change. You know, you have to continue. If you if it's something that you want to do, it's not going to change because you've gotten older. Right. Um, they, they just make it look better, you know, and growing <laughs> up, um, you know, you tend to idolize them. So I think it's, it's, it's important to understand that, um, you know, you're, they're still the same, just like, Wow. You are. <laughs> All right. Question three says: Have you drawn any professional inspiration from any other woman? Um, tell us about it. Yeah, certainly. I think I mentioned briefly that you know when I was younger, um, going through graduate school, um, I would let me let me rephrase that. When I was going through graduate school, not that when I was younger going through graduate school, because <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> What I would do is um, for inspiration because, oh, Lord, it was such a challenging time. Um, I'd stop women that, you know, were seemingly successful and I'd ask them kind of the hardships that they've gone through and for them to inspire me. And they would speak into me and they would say, keep going, you know, you're going to be fine, etc. And so those are some of the things that I guess, you know, I have done, you know, engaging women, um, you know. Um, in okay. <laughs> what would you tell young women who are just starting to work? What would you like them to know? Life is hard, but you get harder. Like, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Agusha New Year. Um, what is one thing you wish more people knew about women in workplaces? That women are a unique breed mm. of the human race. I think I have to put all this together. They are a very unique breed of the mm. human race. You are unique too. 
Yeah, and we need to. Men, add, men are unique too. Yeah, no, uh, I'd say men <laughs> are won. men. Men. Men are give men. Give me thumbs up in the comment section. Men are men. <laughs> we'll give them that. All right. Thank you so much once again. I really appreciate the love and support. Um, guys, if it's your first time seeing you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. She's going to leave her information so I can put it in the description and also on the screen for you guys to see. Can you give us your information again? She said Instagram. Um, it's Akosia New Year. Okay. Our company is Task Us Consulting Group. Mm -hmm. um, our website is taskusgroup.com. Um, and uh, my name is Laurencia. Okay. Right. <laughs> so guys, we're going to see you on the other side. Oh, peace out. Always your boy, N-A-P-P-I-E. <laughs>